is to be here in the midst of God's people. I was praying a moment ago, and the Lord touched my heart Amen. how that he counted me faithful, Amen. enabled me, and put me into the ministry. I've never gotten over that. And I was thinking about the good meeting God has given us this morning and his servants worshiping, testifying. God has more servants than just preachers. He has many servants. And I was thinking about what is going on here this morning. I'd just soon sit, really, and enjoy the good worship of God and the testimonies. This is what's going to be taking place in heaven. John saw a number 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy. Is the Lamb. Now, had the testifying been done on man's accomplishments, his ambitions, his acts, it would have been one thing. But when God is exalted, he's going to come down and sit among those who are exalting him. And I appreciate so much the blessing that God has given my heart. This morning, last night, yesterday afternoon, I thank the Lord for his mighty presence, his moving and working in our midst. And I thought, what a great meeting and what a privilege we all have to be here. We shouldn't take it for granted. A lot of work and prayer going into this meeting, this place, and this kind pastor who would allow the meeting to be hosted here. All the good food we've eaten, the nice room we've given, God is so good. I bless him and praise him, and I'm so thankful I'm saved. You may be seated. I want us to open our Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. I want to read verses 11, 12, and 13 and bring you, I guess I would call this a devotion rather than a sermon because I'm yet working on it. 1 John 5, 11, 12, and 13. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Will you please pray with me and for me? Father, how we thank you so much for the privilege to be in your house, to have experienced the moving of God's Spirit in and upon the heart and lives of your children. Thank you, Lord, to be one of them. Thank you, Lord, that we could experience the goodness of the Lord and hear the testimonies of the great deliverance you have wrought in the heart and lives of your people and the blessings that you've poured out upon them and the prayers that you've answered. God, you are so good. Thank you for letting us stand and help us, Lord, that we'll be faithful to the message we believe with all of our heart you would have for us to preach. We do pray our prayer and we offer our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. I want to pull two phrases from these verses, one from verse 11 and one from verse 13, 
and use them for our text that God hath given to us eternal life that ye may know that ye have eternal life that God hath given unto us eternal life. What a statement we find in the scriptures. And of course, you need not be informed that the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Ghost, ultimately authored these words that God hath given to us eternal life. Here is a statement that is full of assurance. Here is a statement that is permeated with blessings. Before us is a vault of treasures. Before us is a mine of wealth. Before us, amen, is a storehouse of riches. I don't think anyone has ever dug to the depth of what this phrase means to us in the Bible. And if God wrote it, and we are Bible believers, we're going to have to believe what God has said. Now, the emphasis of my preaching this morning is not going to be upon how we are to be saved, but it is what we have when we are saved. Now, that would be hard not to bring the other part in, and we will, but I want to talk to you mostly on what we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. Every believer, now listen to my words carefully, every believer, not every person, but every believer that embraces the truth that God hath given to us eternal life finds grace that satisfies him. We don't have to look in any other direction. All of the grace that we could ever hope to have lies in this statement that God hath given to us eternal life. Not only do we find grace that satisfies us, but we find a love that shelters us. And we are living in a very unfriendly world. This world had, would not appreciate what was going on here this morning. When I saw the saints of God wiping tears from their eyes and expressions of joy upon their face, the world would be bored to death with what was going on here this morning. But I'm telling you, in the midst of this world and everything that we face, we find a love that shelters us. Amen. Then not only do we find a love that shelters us, but we find a joy that sustains us. Thank God I don't have to run out to the uh, attractions of the world. Amen. That's why a lot of churches are doing today. They're bringing the world in to attract the world in. But I'm telling you, give me the old time way. Give me the way where people love the Lord and shout the victory and not ashamed of the Lord that saved their never dying soul. Thank God the joy, Peter said, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I can't understand that, but I know something about that joy, amen, that satisfies me. Then fourthly, this statement of the believer who embraces that finds a peace that settles him. This world has to take a pill to go to bed. They have to take a pill to get up. They have to, and I'm not against taking pills because medicines are essential for a lot of cases. You would die without them. But I'm talking about their minds are in such turmoil. And the fellow who visits with me on Sunday afternoon, we were visiting recently, and he said, Brother Jones, I don't understand. He said, I know people, I talk to them. He's a businessman. I talk to them 
uh, uh, almost daily of all the problems they've got going on in their life and they're telling me everything that's wrong and, and they've tried this and they've tried that and nothing seems to give any relief. And he said, well, let me tell you what you really need. He said, what is that? He said, you need Jesus Christ. Christ can make you a new creature and Christ can meet your needs and he can take care of those problems that's in your life. And he said, it's almost as if they say, oh no, not that. Amen, not that. Anything else but that. Well, thank God, give me that. Give me somebody, amen, that'll put me to bed at night, amen, and, and give me a good night's rest, wake me up in the morning thankful that I can open my eyes and a part of another day that God has made. I'm telling you, I'd rather have uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and all the blessings that comes with it than anything this world could ever afford you and I. Thank God for the peace and thank God for the joy and thank God for the love, amen, that abides in our heart as a believer. We don't have to sack ourselves up in a corner somewhere and make ourselves believe this. We don't have to lay on a couch somewhere and let some man dig into our past and find out, hey, let me tell you something this morning. We don't have a past if we're saved by the grace of God. Thank God the Lord has taken care of that and erased it away. Uh, there's the things in all of our lives this morning that we would not want anyone to see. But thank God, I'm telling you something better than that. God doesn't even see it. When I see the blood, he said, I'll pass over you. Well, every time I think about that, I think about that night in Egypt when God had given Moses instructions on what to do to kill, put that lamb up on the 10th day, kill it in the evening of the 14th day, take its blood, shed across uh, the lintel and up the side post of the door. And he said, at midnight, my destroyer's coming through and said, when he sees the blood, he'll pass over you. Yeah. Amen. All of this is in eternal life. I'm still on my text, all right? Yeah. Amen. And so God, and he's when that destroyer came by. Brother Randy, I wondered what was behind that door. Yeah. There might have been a liar sitting back there. Yeah. Yeah. Lies are terrible sin. Might have been a daughter sitting back there. Yeah. Might have been a thief sitting back there. But the, the destroyer didn't look what was behind the door. He just looked what was on the door. Amen. And when he saw that blood, amen, he just passed on by. Did not matter. Oh, listen tonight. If we were to dig, if we were to dig into our life and find the things that are there, how ashamed we would be. But aren't you glad? Amen. God said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I don't worry about that. Thank God we've appropriated a faith in the blood and the blood has covered our sin. We do have eternal life. We will live forever. We'll never die. What words could fully give significance to this statement? Now, we want to take this statement word by word that God hath given to us eternal life. Look with me, please, at the word that. This refers to the positiveness of it. It is on record. Listen to what we read here. This is, is the, amen, definite article. This is the record. So John is saying here, I am going to give you something that is positive. Now, when we back up and wonder what this record is. Well, this record includes a whole lot of things. I would hate to be among the revisers of this Bible who cut out verse 7. I mean, just completely took it out of their Bible. What if that is part of the record? Back up with me in verse 6. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, 
the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, and he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave of his son, and this is the record. What record did God give of his son? Amen, that he and the Holy Ghost and I are one, and that he bears record in heaven and bears record in earth, and God has given this record that everyone that believeth on the Son hath the witness in himself. Witness, this word is interchangeable, comes from the same word with the word record. We find them here, witness and record. Amen. And so this is, he said, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. And he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he, hath, uh, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. God has it written down somewhere, amen, that he has made, has given eternal life, and that life is in his son. Now, if you have the son, verse 12, you have eternal life. So I'm looking at something here that is very positive. Why do we want to take positive things and put little digs in them and turn them around and almost puts them on the negative side of things? God said, I'm, I'm a Bible believer. I believe what God said. And this is the record. That record is written down in heaven that God has given to us eternal life. It is a positive thing. Now look at the next word. God, that's the person behind the gift. It isn't John who's giving eternal life. May I say, it's not any clergy that gives eternal life. It's not any character that in, the, in the person that gives eternal life. It is not any church that gives eternal life. It is God himself that's given eternal life. When I was a child, if someone gave you something and you no longer uh, were their friend or their main friend and you had another friend, they would come and ask you for that thing back that you had given them. And so when that happened, we called them, and I don't mean to be offensive, but we call them an Indian giver. I don't know where that came from. I was just a boy. And so we called it an Indian giver. That's somebody who gives something and then takes it back. May I inform you this morning, God is not an Indian giver. Amen. Whatever he gives, amen, it is the gift and it has come to you and me. Now, notice the next word. This is a record that God hath. This is the proof of it. John does not write that he might give the gift, that he will give the gift, or that the gift is conditional. He said God has given eternal life. The only conditions are two, and that is repentance and faith. And when those things are carried out, God gives eternal life unto the believer. Now, notice uh, John says here, have I written, verse 13, unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. So it's not Jesus plus, nor is it Jesus and, but it's that believes on Jesus Christ. Come up here, Brother Brown. And I, I want to show you about this term believe, if you'll just stand right there, sir. All right, now, now watch this. That's believing. Believing is totally leaning. 
Now, you know what's going to happen if Brother Brown moves? I'm going to fall. I'm not depending on the sure grip of my shoes. I'm depending on the one I'm leaning on. I'm believing Brother Brown is not going to let me fall. And that reminds me what Jude said now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Amen. Why? Because we have eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm not leaning on Brother Brown and my ability to uh, push myself back. I'm leaning totally on him to keep me because if he moves, I'm going to fall. That is what salvation is, right. leaning entirely, believing fully in Jesus Christ's ability to keep us from falling, to save us, and we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Thank you, sir. We have the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now look at the next word. It is the word given. This has to do with the presentation of it. It is a gift. It is not anything earned. It is not anything deserved. And then he writes to us. Here are the people that it is given to. Not to all as some teach. Christ died for the sins of the whole world. We heard that last night. But it's true. Eternal life is given unto those who believe and receive his substitutionary and sacrificial death on the cross. And so that is to us. Are you in the us congregation? Do you belong to them? God has given eternal life unto everyone who believes on his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is how we obtain eternal life. Now notice the next word, please, eternal. That is the permanency of it. Only God has eternal life. He's the only one. He's the only one. Now he has given to the son that he would have life. That is John 5. Okay, so God has eternal life. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost has eternal life and the very life that God has, the very life that God is, he has given to you and me. Now, may I say this, as long as God lives, you don't have anything to worry about because the very life that God is, he has given you. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, he talks about being made partakers of the divine nature. Amen. We are a partaker of the divine nature of God. That does not mean we are going to become gods, that we are a god now. But it means the very essence of God as life, amen, we have. He has given to us eternal life. Now, notice something else here. Jesus said, because I live, ye shall live also. We live on the life that Jesus Christ is, that he has given to those who believe on him. Now, the last word, the word life. This is the pricelessness of it. What would you give? What would you give for the life you have in God? Why, 10 million worlds, you would not give that life you have in God. Amen for them. You would not do that because this means you are going to live eternally. You're going to live with God. You're going to live in the presence of God. John is writing that this is fundamentally important. It is absolutely necessary. Amen. This is the message. It is the testimony. It is the witness. It is the record of God. In other words, John is saying this. Give heed. Get hold of this truth. Ground yourself in it. Why, John? Because